What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use manual mesh bed leveling with the Marlin firmware to help improve the quality of your 3D prints. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you've seen my previous videos, then you'll know I recently upgraded my Anycubic i3 Mega to a newer version of the open source Marlin firmware. This update allowed me to take advantage of several features that aren't available on the stock Anycubic firmware, which just so happens to also be a very old version of Marlin that Anycubic customized to make work for their printer. The feature that I'm going to be talking about is mesh bed leveling. As most 3D printer owners know, the first step in ensuring your prints come out successfully is making sure you have a level printing surface. Some printers require you to manually level the bed, and others will do it automatically for you. But no matter how you do it or how long you spend trying to get a perfectly level surface, leveling your bed cannot compensate for a warped bed. You can sometimes get by with a slightly warped bed, but you can always see some inconsistencies in your first couple layers that can propagate throughout your print. This is where mesh bed leveling comes in. Mesh bed leveling is a process that creates a mesh model of your bed that allows you to compensate for a warped bed by simply raising or lowering the print head to match the uneven surface of your bed. The process to create a mesh model of your bed is super simple, and if done right, it will immediately improve the quality of your prints coming off of a warped bed. So, without further ado, let's get started creating a mesh model for my printer. The process that I'm going to outline here is for printers with Marlin 1.1.0 or newer. Marlin is the most used open source firmware for 3D printers and CNC machines, so there's a good chance that your printer will be able to do this. On the other hand, since so many different brands use Marlin, each one of them is going to have a different user interface, which means the Marlin features that they choose to provide interface support for is going to vary. With that in mind, I'm going to show you two different ways to utilize mesh bed leveling. First, I'll show you the basics using the touchscreen on my printer, and then I'll also show you the necessary G-code commands in case your printer's interface doesn't support it. To get started, first we're going to heat up our print bed using the controls on our printer. Since your bed changes shape as it heats up, you'll want to make sure it's at the temperature that you print at while completing all of the steps we're going to do today. Once your bed is up to temperature, make sure your bed is level using the default bed leveling method for your printer. For the i3 Mega, that means using the four thumb screws to level all four corners of the bed. I usually use a piece of paper and adjust the bed so I feel a slight amount of friction between the nozzle and the paper. Once you've leveled your bed, now might be a good time to do a test print so you have something to compare to after you create the mesh. I'm using a test print I found on Thingiverse that just creates a square at each of the calibration points. This print only takes a few minutes to print, but once it's complete, you'll have a good idea of which parts of your print bed are in greater need of adjustment. I'll throw a link in the description for the print that I used, but there are tons of different test prints you can use, so just pick whichever one you prefer. From here, you'll no longer use the thumb screws to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the print bed. Everything will be controlled by software from here on out. So if your printer has the option, go ahead and start the mesh bed leveling procedure, at which point your printer will move the nozzle to the first calibration point. Now you'll just use the printer's interface to adjust the print head up or down until it's the right distance from the bed. On my i3 Mega, which I've flashed with custom Marlin firmware, I have the option to move my print head up or down by either 0.1 millimeters or 0.02 millimeters. Those options may vary for your printer, but it should have some sort of method for moving the print head up and down for the calibration process. So using these options, I can get the nozzle to the right height so it's just barely scratching on the same piece of paper I used to level the bed initially. Once you're done with the first point, tell your printer to advance to the next point and repeat the adjustment process until you've adjusted all the calibration points for your printer, which in my case is 25 points. When you've calibrated each point for your printer, save the new mesh you've created by clicking the Save to EEPROM option if your printer has it, or by sending the M500 command to your printer. Your printer now has a mesh model of your bed saved in EEPROM, but we still need to tell your printer to use it every print. To do that, you simply need to open up your slicing software, look for an area where you can edit your start G-code, and paste the following two commands below the G28 line that should already be there. M501 loads all saved settings from EEPROM, 
an M420S1 enables mesh bed leveling if you have a valid mesh of your print bed, which you should after following the previous steps. To test out the new mesh we created for our print bed, reslice the same test print we used before so the new start lines are added to our start G code, otherwise the printer won't know to use the mesh we just created. Run the test print again and you should see a nice improvement in the quality of your print, especially for the first few layers. You can repeat this process as many times as you need until you get it right, however you could find it annoying if you only have one or two calibration points to adjust. This is where learning how to create a mesh for your bed manually would come in handy. If your printer controls don't allow you to run the mesh bed leveling procedure or you only have a few points that need updating, there is a series of rather simple G-code commands that will be all you need. The G-code command G29, when paired with various arguments, allows you to view the current mesh, if there is one, start a mesh leveling procedure, or edit the points on your existing mesh. To do this, you'll need to be able to send G-code commands to your printer and view the response. I usually slice with Curo, which allows you to send G-code commands to your printer, but you can't view the response. To get around this, I use Octoprint to control my printer, but you could also use a separate program called Pronterface, which I'll have linked in the description. So within your terminal of choice, send the command G29S0 to get the current status and existing mesh if there is one. In the event that you haven't created a mesh yet, G29S0 will tell you that mesh bed leveling has no data. At this point, we are ready to start the calibration process and manually set the Z offset for each of the calibration points. The main commands we're going to use here are G29S1, G29S2, and G1Z, followed by the amount you would like to adjust the Z offset for that calibration point. One other thing to keep in mind here is I'm going to use incremental positioning for the Z axis so I can adjust it incrementally rather than keeping track of the current Z position for each calibration point but I'll explain that further in a little bit. For now, we're just going to start creating our mesh by sending the G29S1 command, at which point our printer will home all three axes and head over to our first calibration point. When the print head gets to the first calibration point, the printer is going to put it at a Z height of zero, which is the position it was in when you leveled your bed. Now the printer will wait for us to adjust the height of the print head until we're happy, and then it will save it when we move to the next point. So at the first calibration point, if you find there's too much space between the nozzle and the print bed, and you need to lower it, send the following commands. First, send a G91 command to tell the printer we are using incremental positioning, and then send the command G1Z, followed by the amount of millimeters you want to move up or down. For example, here I'll move the print head down by 0.02 millimeters. Notice the negative sign immediately following the Z. This tells the printer we want to move the print head down instead of up. Remove the negative sign following the Z if you want to move the print head up. For example, G1Z0.1 will move the print head away from the print bed by 0.1 millimeters. When you've gotten the print head the right distance away from the bed, send the command G90 to set the printer back to absolute positioning. At this point, I want to make a note about the G91 and the G90 commands that we sent earlier. G91 sets the printer into incremental positioning, which essentially means that when we move the print head with G-code, it sets the new position to zero. This means that the next time we tell the print head to move, it will be moving from the new location rather than the absolute zero location. On the other hand, if we left it in absolute positioning, each time we told it to move the print head, it would be adjusting it from the original zero position, which is where your printer homes to. For example, in incremental positioning, Sending the command G1Z0.1 followed by G1Z0.02 would result in the print head being located at a height of 0.12 millimeters. On the other hand, in absolute positioning, the same two commands would result in the print head being at a final height of 0.02 millimeters since you're telling the printer to move from the absolute zero position rather than the current position. In the end, you could use either absolute or incremental positioning, but keep in mind that absolute positioning requires you to keep track of the overall position if you want to move the print head. Anyways, with all that positioning nonsense out of the way, once you've gotten the print head at a height you want it at, send the G90 command to return the printer to absolute positioning, and then send the command G29S2, which will move the print head to the next calibration point. You'll repeat this cycle over and over until you've completed all of the calibration points for your printer. So to quickly recap, you'll start the mesh creation with the command G29S1. You'll set the printer to incremental positioning with G91 and adjust the height of the nozzle with the command G1Z, 
followed by the increment you want to adjust to. Send G90 to return to absolute positioning once the printhead is at a suitable height and move to the next calibration point with the command G29S2. Now when you've completed every single mesh calibration point, save the mesh to EEPROM with the M500 command so that your printer can recall the saved mesh next time you print. Now you should be able to rerun your test print that we configured to use the mesh, and hopefully, if you did everything right, your print should turn out much better than before. The last thing that I want to show you is how to edit a specific point on your mesh in the event that only a few points are in need of adjustment. Since the calibration process can take a good chunk of time, especially if you're doing it through G-code, it can be sort of daunting to have to recalibrate the entire mesh just to fix a few points. So, using the same G29 command as before, coupled with the S3 argument, we can adjust a specific point in our mesh to a certain value. Within our terminal, send G29 S0 to recall the currently saved mesh, and the terminal will print it out in a fairly easy to read table. In this table, the top left is going to be the very first point that was calibrated in our mesh creation procedure, and the bottom right will be the last point. When you find the coordinates of the point you want to update, you'll need to increment each coordinate by one because for some reason the printer outputs a zero index when the mesh is actually one indexed. So the first point would be coordinates one, one. If, for example, I wanted to update the very center of my print bed, I would use the coordinates three, three, and I could update the Z offset for that point with the following command. G29, S3, X3, Y3, Z, followed by the Z offset. To check if you made the correct change, send the G29S0 command again, and you should see the updated value in the grid. If it looks correct, go ahead and save it to EEPROM with the M500 command again. If at any point you find your mesh is just not working out for you, or it's in a state that would be easier to just start from scratch, send the command G29S5 to reset and disable your mesh. Now, I know this can be a lot to take in, especially in the limited amount of time I have, so if you have further questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to help if I can. Be sure to check the description for links to some documentation that should help you get going. Otherwise, let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, and if you hated it, you know what to do, but if you liked it, be sure to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.